Hey, good morning. Ed Sakura, Extension Plant Pathologist at Auburn University. Just showing you my home where I stay most winters, overwintering in kudzu patches. Um, soybean rust was a major problem this year. We saw more damage from the disease than at any other time since it arrived in the U.S. back in 2004. Uh, we saw yield losses from Baldwin County and South Alabama all the way up to the Tennessee border. Worst I've ever seen. Uh, we're at the plant blue reading unit of the E.V. Smith Research Station right here. We have a kudzu patch here that the disease does not overwinter, but down in the panhandle of Florida, South Georgia, South Alabama, uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, this is where rust survives. It overwinters on kudzu, as most of you know, as pustules. And typically when I say, if we're going to have a severe problem with soybean rust, the first thing I say, did it overwinter in the south? Number two, did we have a moderately mild spring with moisture that allowed the disease to develop on kudzu? Did we have a wet, mild summer that allowed the disease to move into soybeans? And did we have any effects like tropical storms? And I think we've had one or two this year that helped the disease move very quickly through the state. So kudzu at where it starts, this patch is completely infested now. Uh, normally when I'm down south, say in Mobile or Fairhope, uh, I'm looking just for overwintering sites and abandoned buildings and so on. Uh, this past year, I know Bob Kimmerite found a lot of rust in the uh, southeast corner of Georgia. They found it up in South Carolina as well. So we had a lot of disease overwintering, uh, readily overwintering. So growers in, in South Alabama, the Panhandle of Florida and Georgia were all very uh, at risk to the disease. This is a Right now we're in a large scale fungicide strip test. I, I do small plow work, which is fine, but I find to get better results or more results similar to what farmers have with a large scale trial. So this is a uh, five treatment test replicated, four different fungicides being tested. I think they're about 500, 600 feet long, eight row plots. And uh, we had soybean rust in a soybean sentinel plot just about 100 yards behind you came in late June, early July, and uh, what we did was let's start the, set in the, or the uh, spray program up, the uh, strip test. So we uh, applied our fungicides, our four treatments, they went on after rust was already in the field, so not ideally. Normally you want to get your fungicides on before the disease shows up, so when Sentinel Plot starts firing up in your area, if it's in South Florida, South Alabama, South Georgia. These went on after the disease was present, they went on right before a rain, so that fungicides were put under a lot of pressure to perform. Uh, off to my right, this was a Top Guard EQ. These eight rows off to the right. On the left was an unsprayed control, but you could just see the foliage still remaining on these plants. If you would have came back uh, two, three weeks earlier, you would have saw much more dramatic differences, and I think you'll see that in some of my slides that are uh, being presented. Um, I'm sure we're gonna see, in, in past years, we've seen a 20 to 25% yield increase at this station, which is we're 25 miles east of Montgomery, so we're in south central Alabama. I think this year will probably be more like 35 to 40 percent yield increase with the fungicide application, poorly timed, versus the unsprayed control. Farther south we go, uh, growers or unsprayed fields are going to get hammered. Uh, of course, Hurricane Sally uh, did a number on a lot of my trials down in the Baldwin County area. We have data from Bruton as well. Uh, but this was one application applied at uh, late R3, early R4, so as the pods in the upper part of the canopy are, are expanding over about an inch and a half long, one application, and you can see the differences just late in the season right here, and we'll get yield data with a yield monitor here in a couple weeks. Uh, down in South Florida, along the uh, Panhandle, South Alabama, you have rust surviving on kudzu right around you. It's in your neighborhood. So you gotta think about using a fungicide in your program. And I know we have growers in South Alabama and as you saw in that, or you'll see in that video, that uh, the grower never sprayed and they were just wiped out. Probably, I would imagine the field went down, uh, defoliated three to four weeks earlier than it should have, typically. So one application would be great at about the R3, early R4 stage. In some cases, under heavy disease pressure like we had in 2020, a second application at R5 might be warranted. Um, but this is just a unbelievable demonstration of what the disease can do. And we've had uh, situations like this in North Alabama, up on the Tennessee border in Belmina, up in uh, Crossville, we have trials with similar results. Yield losses will probably be less, but 
Uh, it was a terrible disease for soybean rust and the only disease that really mattered in my mind this year. I mean, there are a number of fungicides on the market now available for soybean rust control as well as control of uh, other diseases like frog eye um, on target spot. Uh, back in 2005, we had a, a fewer chemicals, a lot of them were just protective materials like quadris and headline that had to be on before the disease showed up in a protective manner. Now we have more uh, mixtures of products that have a protected and a curative uh, active ingredient available so you can spray maybe after disease shows up at very low levels like, like in this field. Um, again, in, in, in South Alabama, the Panhandle, Georgia, you probably want to get in about R3, uh, especially before that canopy closes. Um, but don't go too early because then you're going to have to rely on a second application and it's just going to cost you more money out of your pocket. So try and time those applications as possible. And always stay, be aware of what's going on on the, on the IPM pipe soybean rust distribution map. I mean, that's, that's the, uh, a key thing. We're uploading this all the time. And so you have an idea where the disease is. If it's in your region, you better be prepared to spray. And uh, I mean, this year, Alabama, uh, Mississippi, Georgia, I mean, we're lit up like Christmas trees right now. So, but those early sprays for you fellows or you people down south, uh, very important to know where the disease is at any given time. And that's why we're out scouting. That's why I'm wandering kudzu patches, being chased by dogs and so on uh, for you. But, uh, those, uh, those risk maps, it's the uh, IPM pipe, IPM pipe soybeans, and it'll take you directly to the uh, soybean rust site. Click on the, on the page, you'll go to the maps, and you'll see real-time uh, distribution of the disease in red. Um, I'm on that constantly, updating sites. Uh, some years we might not have rust. It might be, did an overwinter, it might be very mild, you might not have to spray. I mean, that, those, those years happen, especially when we have very dry conditions, but Always be aware of that. So I take a look at it once a week and uh, just see what's going on in your area, especially if you're, if you're in North Georgia or Central Alabama or, or other places. Other thing, follow me on Twitter at Alabama Ed. Alabama Ed, I need you. I need you. But uh, I mean, I'm always uploading stuff on soybean rust, corn diseases, uh, vegetable diseases, what have you, whatever I find out there, hemp, uh, I'll add to that site. But I'm all about soybean rust, as many of you know. And I, I almost give daily updates on what's going on in the state on kudzu, on soybeans, control, and so on. And Bob Kimwright over in Georgia and Tom Allen in Mississippi State are also updating their situations in their state on this disease as well as other diseases of soybeans, corn, and field crops.